Okay, so now we're going to learn to analyze and compare strengths of intermolecular forces. So this is lecture part three. Okay, so there are various factors that affect the strengths of intermolecular forces in substances. So what we're going to do is analyze the type and relative strengths of the intermolecular forces present. So let's do a few examples to see how this is done, how we think through these problems. Okay, so just a reminder, here is our graphic showing the strengths of intermolecular forces, relative strengths ranked from strongest to weakest, okay? And I have dispersion forces in red because I want you to remember a very important point, and that is that every substance has dispersion forces. Since all matter has electrons, then that means all substances have dispersion forces. So what we're going to do is also look to see if there is another stronger force present in addition to those dispersion forces. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to do, you're going to draw the Lewis structure for the molecule, and you're going to draw it with the geometry. Okay, so I have two examples down here. So I have carbon tetrachloride and trichloromethane. Okay, now what we want to do is analyze these two molecules and see if there's a permanent molecular dipole in it. Okay, so let's look at carbon tetrachloride first. So we have um, polar bonds between carbon and chlorine, so every single one, but because it's a tetrahedral shape and all of the bonded atoms are the same, all of these bond dipoles cancel out, meaning that the molecule does not have an overall molecular dipole. So even though electronegative chlorine is in this molecule, all those bond dipoles cancel out, making this a nonpolar molecule. Now, trichloromethane. Now, look at this guy. He has a hydrogen and then these chlorines. And so basically, that symmetry is broken. So now, these bond dipoles are not canceled out by a similar bond dipole where this hydrogen is. So th now they don't cancel out anymore. So trichloromethane does have an overall permanent molecular dipole. And that means it has dipole-dipole interactions. This guy doesn't. He just has dispersion forces. This one has dipole-dipole interactions. So another issue is identifying hydrogen bonding. When is it present? Okay, And what you're looking for is a hydrogen directly bonded to fluorine, nitrogen, or oxygen. Okay, and you're also looking for a lone pair. Okay, but the easiest way to identify it is when you see a hydrogen directly bonded to a highly electronegative element. So ammonia clearly fits that category. Now, here's a fluorine bonded to carbon, and then there's a hydrogen over here. Okay, so it might be tempting to think that, oh, well, this can hydrogen bond, but it can't because this carbon is not partially positive enough. The hydrogen is not even bonded directly to the fluorine, so this molecule cannot hydrogen bond with itself. Okay? So don't be fooled by a hydrogen bonded to carbon with a highly electronegative atom somewhere in the molecule. Okay? Because sometimes that's easy to do. So now let's look at comparing strengths of dispersion forces. Just because we have an electronegative atom here, chlorine, and it's bonded to a phosphorus this time. Now just because we have that doesn't mean that we have an overall molecular dipole. So anytime you have one of those basic geometries and the substituted atom or the bonded atoms are all the same, then that means that all those bond dipoles cancel out. Okay, so no matter what the geometry, so the, here's a trigonal bipyramidal structure, and the same thing applies. All the bond dipoles cancel out. Same with this guy. They all cancel out. So now what are we looking at to determine which one has stronger intermolecular forces? And they, neither one of them has a dipole-dipole interaction. They can't have a dipole-induced dipole interaction because there's no other substance. We don't have a mixture. So we just have this in a flask with itself and this in a flask with itself. So we don't have a mixture 
and we do have dispersion forces. Now, this is a heavier molecule. There are more electrons. Bromine is heavier than chlorine. The phosphorus is the same. So this molecule has stronger dispersion forces than this one. Okay, so phosphorus pentabromide has stronger dispersion forces than phosphorus pentachloride. All right, so now another aspect is molecular shape. Okay, so basically an extended versus a compact structure. Okay, so here's these guys are all bonded in a line. This guy closer to a spherical shape. Might look a little bit more like that. Okay, so we can kind of think of this as kind of a box shape. This guy is more of a round shape. Now, extended molecules like this, these guys, they have more opportunities to interact with neighbors. Okay, so the way that they do that is they can line up spaghetti like. And you can see that the more spherical structures really just have points of contact, points of interaction, but not all the way along one side like these guys do. So stronger interactions for extended structures than for compact ones. Okay, now how do intermolecular forces affect physical properties? So the boiling point increases with increasing strength of intermolecular forces. And we're going to talk a little bit more about boiling point in the next group of lectures that have to do with phase transitions. We will also talk about vapor pressure in a separate lecture. And basically, the stronger the intermolecular attractions are, the higher the boiling point and the higher the melting point for the substance. Now, the vapor pressure goes down with increasing strength of intermolecular forces. All right, so it's harder for them to escape because they're more attracted to their neighbors. So the vapor pressure decreases. Okay, so which would you predict to have the higher boiling point? All right, so the key here, hydrogen bonding, a much stronger interaction. This molecule does have a dipole, so this would have dipole-dipole interactions, but hydrogen bonding is a special case of dipole interactions. So we would expect that this molecule would have the higher boiling point. All right, so which of these two would be predicted to have the higher melting temperature? Okay, so now we already talked about phosphorus pentabromide, and we found out that it has higher dispersion forces, stronger attractions than phosphorus pentachloride. So we would expect this molecule to have the higher melting temperature, and it does. All right, so which one of these two would have the lower vapor pressure? So remember, lower vapor pressure results from increased intermolecular attractions, which make it harder for individual molecules to escape from the liquid or solid phase to the gas phase. And so, yes, so basically because of the larger amount of opportunity for interacting with neighbors, the extended structure is predicted to have the lower vapor pressure than the compact structure. Okay, so I'll post some example problems separately. Um, now, remember, you really need to be able to determine if this molecule, as molecules that you're looking at, have a permanent molecular dipole in order to analyze these intermolecular forces. So if you are shaky on that, be sure to see the review molecular dipole examples.